afternoon. Good evening, my illustrious family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me. Yo, host the DJ. I just want to tell y'all something right now. It probably sounds a little freaking weird. Um, and it looks weird in here. No so, obviously, my lighting, excuse me, y'all, is not what it's supposed to be. It doesn't magically go away. Okay, and um, that's why when I'm back here, I try not to make, um, you know, videos at all, except this is an exception. And the main reason that it's an exception is because of uh, a lot of folks' response to the Amber Geiger video. And, um, you know, I think it's real important that I just make a brief statement about Amber Geiger, part two. Oh, boy. You know, and without the risk of sounding too uh, rebellious for y'all, I would like to say that it seems like Black people are always in a position where they have to show their forgiveness. Okay, and it's not like anybody is even interested in whether, um, you know, we should be forgiven. Uh, in fact, it's the dominant society because they're still mad at Muslims for 911 and they still want to act revenge on them. And there's no forgiveness in the heart that that they perceive Muslims blew up the World Trade Center. I come to the conclusion that there's just some things that just may not be forgivable. Um, and it's just involving the two people that are involved in the issue in the first place. Um, both of them, John's, John's brother had every right and he took advantage of it to, to say what he expressed. But his family made it very clear, in my opinion, how they also felt. And I think that that was good. Again, my whole problem was the judge. I think what she did was definitely not a separation between church and state. I think what she did was a travesty. Because I want to know how many black folks that she have came down off the bench and hugged. Or even gave them her personal Bible because she felt sorry for them. Even if it was a police officer who had been uh, charged, uh, you know, with something hideous. What I'm saying is, I don't think she had th that that comes to play in her uh, everyday life. And I think that because Amber Geiger was this white woman who presented all these tears... And that's all basically throughout history, uh, no disrespect, is that all white women had to do was cry. And so once they cry, it leaves the impression to uh, a lot of folks that they are, oh, I just feel so sorry for me. I am such a victim. And I think that that's what bothered me so much is because the whole system seemed to, at that point, make Amber Geiger the victim. And Fulton John is almost like he came into her apartment. And that I didn't appreciate. I can't say what somebody's, like, again, method or, you know, forgiveness is on an individual, personal level. And I'm not trying to do that. But because the judge broke so much protocol, she has to be re reprimanded. Because she's an officer of the court. And um, it's for her to make that kind of blunt, uh, blatant error and allow that to happen as a black woman first and foremost and as a judge did it was it was a travesty because here we have a person that was accused and then and uh, convicted of murder but yet and still there were people rubbing her hair the judge came down and hugged her first okay uh told her to go with crispy Go with God. Go with God, Crispy. Okay? Um, all that was totally unnecessary to me. And that is what I call myself speaking to. Okay? Not that, that that 
you know, what forgiveness is for everybody. And for everybody, forgiveness means different, okay? There are some things that are unforgivable to me. I can't forgive white people for the slave trade. Just like Jewish people can't um, forgive Germans for the Hitler, for the Holocaust. That's why they say they'll never forget. I cannot, in good faith, to my ancestors, forgive them for these people for what how they brutalized us. And not just for 100, 200 years, for year, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So that is my take on forgiveness. I don't forgive this government how, for how they wreaked havoc on my people. Uh, American descendants of slaves. And with that being said, I don't use that as an ex excuse point. I look at it every time I look at my people and when I see how crazy we are. When I see how dysfunctional we are. When I see just how illiterate in some points that we are. Yes, you could talk about self-responsibility and all that stuff all you want to, but there was a condition and there were things set up in place for this to be the way it is. And the people that run this show, they're not doing things a week in advance. They're doing things 20, 30, 40, 50 years in advance so they'll know just how the world is going to look, whether they're here or not. And so that's what I, you know, I'm here representing. I'm here representing a person that's been on the planet over 50 years that can actually say now, uh, y'all, I don't care what you think about that because this is what you've shown me in the time that I've been here, okay? So with that being said, uh, as a human being, God bless Amber Geiger. She made a terrible mistake, and I'm sure that's, that's a mistake she wish she could have back. But once she got on the phone and started talking about, well, let's just make love and I still need some sex and all this kind of stuff, that showed me that she was totally void of any kind of human feeling for this black individual that she just shot. Okay, so with that being said, I don't have that kind of compassion for her. I just, God bless you, go with, go with God, crispy. Go with God. That's what I feel about that. So... I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I wanted to get that out, and I wanted to say it and get it out of my system. For those of y'all who don't like it, oh, well. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will be back with another video. Thank y'all very, very much.